This week on Sportsman TV, hunting season's over. We're back in the Atchafalaya Basin. Come on, go with us. Well, you know, the uh, the Atchafalaya Basin, when you get a chance to go fishing in our area, is probably, you know, cream of the crop. You know, for scenic beauty, the fishing is extraordinary. Uh, it's just a really cool place. And, you know, and typically during the colder months, we've had some extremely cold weather recently, kind of knocked the, the uh, speckled trout fishing back. You know, the red fishing's still all right, but if I got my choice, you know, this time of the year when I go fishing, I'm bass fishing. Okay, we're at Doron's Landing, which is about halfway uh, between Pier Park and Morgan City. Uh, just It's kind of in the middle of the basin. Uh, they actually have two landings you can put in in the spillway or you can put in on the Verrett side. Uh, we're actually just north of uh, the Grassy Lake area. And the basin is so big and vast, it gives you a lot of choices. Uh, one thing that's happening on the spillway side, which is on the other side of the levee from where we are this morning, the Mississippi River is fluctuating right now, up and down, up and down. But the water level here is dictated more by our local rainfall. And uh, especially like this time of the year, we're having a bunch of cold fronts, you know. Um, this water's a little more stable, so the water's a little warmer. Well, basically this morning, we started off right by the launch. It's a big dead end. And uh, typically this time of the year, you know, that's where the warmer water is. And those fish have started to migrate off the main passes and the main bayous into these dead ends. Even though there's no sign of green around and it still looks wintertime, these fish have already started moving. Our daylights have has started changing. And as the day's changing, you know, those fish go ahead and move and their body tells them, you know, it's that time of the year. We need to be in those dead ends. You know, normally, uh, especially like in the dead of wintertime, you know, the shad is the dominant, you know, on a place that has shed, definitely seems to be the dominant forage. But, you know, our water temperature, you know, is low 50s and crawfish will start to become a little active, you know, from now on. But still, I feel like the shad is the, you know, the number one forage. Uh-oh, some cat activity. That's always supposed to be good luck, isn't it? Fishing around a cat. This is Ryan Terrio. I'm here at Bowie Outfitters and listen, I'm an avid bow hunter. If you're looking for a place with the best service in the south and wonderful accessories, not to mention a top of the line bow range, Bowie Outfitters is a place for you. A wonderful staff here and great service at Bowie, but an awesome selection of guns. We have pistols, rifles, and shotguns and everything else you could imagine. And for all those hard to find bass fishing and inshore products, Bowie Outfitters is a place for you. That's Bowie Outfitters for everything outdoors in between Essen and Blue Bonnet on Perkins Road. Things were slower and easier back when, but even though things move faster now, it's still easy to do business with Service Chevrolet Cadillac. For over 40 years, we've known it's about more than a great price. It's about genuine customer service. That's why we've sold more Chevys than any other dealer in Acadiana. Plus, right now, you get all the rebates, all the discounts, and rock-bottom finance rates. Log on at servicegm.com or come see us at Service Chevrolet Cadillac. Ambassador Caffrey in Lafayette. Don't just be a sportsman, look like one too. Men, women, kids, everyone wants to look like a good sport. And now you can find it all in one place without leaving the house. Our popular sportsman logo clothing and accessories are just a click away at louisianasportsman.com. T-shirts, caps, polarized sunglasses, jewelry, koozies, and more are available in a variety of sizes and colors. It's easy to show the world that you are a sportsman. Visit shop.louisianasportsman.com today and get that perfect sportsman item for yourself or as a gift for that sportsman in your life. 
Ram presents the Louisiana Sportsman Show and Boat Show, the fishing and hunting sales event of the year. It's Louisiana's biggest boat show, ATV show, tractor and outdoor power equipment show ever. Truckload deals on fishing and hunting gear. Eat great food. Watch the splash dogs. See the big buck contest. Test drive a Ram truck or Yamaha ATV. The 35th annual Louisiana Sportsman Show. Lamar Dixon Gonzalez, March 13th through 16th. Visit LouisianaSportsmanShow.com. You can tell how white they are. When they come out of that cold water like that, they always look like that. This is out. Mm. Tasty. He's borderline on keeper. I like them a little smaller. <laughs> we unloaded. The water's 53.7 to 53.4. We run 20 miles to another area, and the water's 53.4 to 53.8, you know, when we started. And uh, where we put the boat in, you know, in, in the past, I have caught some fish. We did, not. I had one bite in there today, but the water was pretty and clear. But I, I think the biggest thing to that, and I figured that out later, it wasn't that we started in a bad area, we started at a bad time. Because even after we moved into some new areas, you know, I started to get a, you know, I got a few bites and they weren't hooking up very good. It just seemed like as the day went on and progressed, the fish got a little more uh, aggressive. A lot of fish started to move up. And what I mean by that, I think a lot of those fish were just out hanging off the edge of the lip. The canal we were fishing in had a little two foot flat that fell into about six. And um, it seemed like as the day progressed, there were more fish coming out of that six foot of water and moving up on that little break. And the canal was loaded with shad. Typically, you know, now the, the fish aren't moving very much. Wherever you find them at the day, they'll be here tomorrow, the next day, you know. When that water's cold, they don't do a lot of swimming around. Kind of like the same way it is in the heat of the summer. Once they get there, you know, they may reposition a little bit, but as far as doing any major migration, that's pretty much, you know, done. Exploding hamburger. That's what he thought he got. Well, he got it. That's cool. Uh, that, well, you know, this canal here is a little different from the one, the other one we were in where we were catching them on the red eye shad. You know, it was clean with grass. This one actually has a lot of laydowns, has some mats, just a perfect, you know, heavy cover place, and you really can't get that plug to them. So that's a three quarter ounce hack attack jig, and I'm just dropping it through the, the heaviest stuff I can find. What really got my eye in here oh, is these mats that are blown up in the brush. You know, with some dead penny wart, some high sun trash, just perfect place, you know, it warms up in the afternoon for those fish to float up underneath it. It's typically, that's the way fishing is this time of the year, you know. You have to change. You can't say, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch all of them on spinnerbait. I, I would go from a crankbait to a lipless crankbait, changing jig, uh, had a jig bite, uh, had a couple lipless crankbait bites, caught a couple decent ones on it, lost a couple good ones, uh, and just kept changing around. But it seemed like I was really on the right lures, I guess, but it was a timing deal. And uh, as it got later, it just kept getting a little better and a little better and a little better. You know, it's a little after three now. And really the best time today has been from 12 to three. That's when most of our, uh, you know, most of our bites come. You know, we fished around a lot of wood, but vegetation has seemed to be the big key. It'll be a stretch of bank, you know, where you have that two foot flat that's got some coontail and uh, some other grass mixed on it. We've got a lot more bites. There hasn't really been, we fished around a lot of wood and uh, I've yet to catch one that I could say was relating to the wood. Now, it might've been relatively close, you know, a piece of wood relatively close where I got bit, but it was about the grass, not about the wood. And it's funny because different days, you know, It'll be all about the wood, but today it's definitely been about the grass. It seems like when we get on the stretches where there's not much grass, it's, you know, we just don't hardly get any bites. Uh, either all the bites have come either cranking around that grass or, uh, you know, I've had a handful of jig bites, you know, where I can find a mat, you know, under a mat, so.
you know, right on that mat, right where you're supposed to be. You're just going to have to keep whittling them away. It just matters when you got them way in. It don't matter how long it took you to get them. Nobody knows that part. You keep that a secret. That's the power of television. When Jerry puts it all together, it looked like it was a flurry. It's over. Quit thinking about it, Jerry. <laughs> it's done. They're safe now. I mean, you could cover shoot them. Boom. One shot. <laughs> but you know, typically in our area, late January, February are when our biggest fish are caught. And, it, and it's funny, and you would think that they would be caught when they were spawning, but most of them are actually caught right before they spawn. And then big fish start moving up, and they start moving up and getting on cypress trees and patches of grass and, you know, in position in places to get ready to spawn. That's typically when most of them are caught. S11 sunglasses makes it like the water is not even there. For camping, fishing, hunting, or anything outdoors, bring along Arctic Ice. Simply freeze these versatile cooler packs and they're ready to keep your food and drinks cold throughout your outing. Arctic Ice can maintain in a cooler 60% longer than the equal weight of regular ice and with no more mess or soggy food. Arctic Ice is clean and easy. Alaskan series can maintain a sub 40 degree cooler for days and the Tundra series can keep game frozen till it gets home. Preserve an Arctic refuge in your cooler. Choose Arctic Ice. Fishing, it's where good stories come from. It's about good times and family and friends. It's about taking a couple home for dinner tonight and saving a few for tomorrow. It's all about that and so much more. To CCA, fishing is about enjoying today and making sure tomorrow is even better. To us, fishing comes with a responsibility for the resources we enjoy so much. If fishing means all that to you, then you belong with CCA. Louisiana Sportsman Magazine. For over 31 years, your source for fishing and hunting information. Each month you will find stories by local experts on everything from bass to redfish to ducks, deer to trout and turkey. We've got incredible local information that you can use immediately to get more success outdoors. You'll also enjoy monthly columns on cooking, the latest lures, GPS locations, shooting, kayaks, and much more. Have Louisiana Sportsman delivered to your house and safe. $24.99 gets you a full year of Louisiana Sportsman. To order today, visit louisianasportsman.com. You know, it's a funny thing, but vegetation, any time you have, that's a big deal. Like, if I got a grass bed and I got a row of cypress trees or a row of laydowns, I will choose the grass bed. And the deal with it is it's so much cover. Like, a little bit of grass goes a long ways. You, you know, it's like if you had a line of cypress trees, which I love cypress trees, but it's like a fish to every tree. Okay, if you got a 100-yard line of cypress and there's 15 cypress trees, you know, there's like a 15 bass. If you've got a hundred yard stretch of vegetation, uh, some type of grass, like today it was some type of grass, I'm not sure what it was, it actually looked like yard grass, and then outside it growing deeper, probably two and a half to four feet of water, there were coontail patches. I mean, you can hold hundreds of fish in a grass bed like that. This is a KVD 1.5 Sexy Shad. It just really resembles the shad that were in that canal. I actually started off throwing it, and I threw it for a good bit and didn't get a bite. Now, from there, I switched and it really seemed to be, you know, probably the best bait all day. This is a half ounce red eye shad 
you know, which is a, a rattling lipless crankbait. The color, same as the uh, 1.5 Sexy Shad. And I, I just, I, Sexy Shad is kind of, you know, it's not super flashy, but it just really resembles those shad in that cold water. You know, a lot of times I like chrome. I like chrome sexy shad or like chrome and blue, chrome and black, but it's a little darker day. And those shad, you know, just like the fish, their colors when the water's cold doesn't seem to be as vibrant. So rather than using a real shiny one, I like that white, you know, better than say a chrome this time of the year. Pair that with a good fillet knife. <laughs> you in. <laughs> Can you hear that butane? The deal. Is he hook funny? No, he ain't hook funny. He just wild, Jerry. He just wild. He ain't hooked very good either. <laughs> he couldn't good enough get in here. Looks like he's been eluding me all day. You know, I don't know how many of them I've had to bite, and, I, and he just barely hooked, look. And they just crush it when they get it. The cool thing about that lipless crankbait is, you know, I'm throwing it in that grass bed. I want to try to stay in the grass as much as possible. And I'm just pulling. I'm hanging that grass and pulling that bait. And when that water's cold like that, you get kind of reaction strikes by doing that. You don't catch a lot of those fish just, you know, on a straight retrieve this time of the year. You need that bait doing something different. So when I will get just free of the grass and I'm not feeling it, I occasionally will pull it and drop it and give it that same appearance like, you know, it's a wounded shad or that cold water, that shad's kind of crippled. It's something to generate those fish. You know, I did use a jig today every time we found some really thick cover, found a mat. Uh, I actually had three or four bites, you know, on a jig doing that. Just a lot of the area that we fished in uh, wasn't conducive for that. You know, it wasn't the right time of cover, but again, it's like being an opportunist. A sexy crawl, got a little rattle on it. But that's basically just a three quarter ounce hack attack jig with a, uh, a rage crawfish. I really, especially this time of year when I'm punching, if I can get a jig through the cover rather than a piece of plastic, I like it a little better, it's a little slower. Like once it breaks through that mat, it just, you know, it's a little slower profile. It's a little bigger profile. Well, you know, basically this canal's got mats in it. And what I mean by mat is, you know, all that vegetation matted up together. Uh, that's actually a hyacinth, duckweed, salvinia mat right there. But, and so like late in the afternoons, a lot of times those fish will move under there. That sun's been beaning on it and uh, it may just be a degree warmer. It doesn't have to be much. You know, they just get right under the uh, mat and they, they're just sitting up there absorbing the heat. They're, they're actually, they're not under their feeding, but you can drop that bait and punch it right through that grass and it'll fall right in front of them. And a lot of times you can get a reaction strike. I will, uh, you know, drop that bait through and let it fall to the bottom. And then I start yo-yoing it back up, but I start fishing it up higher. Uh, I'm not fishing it on the bottom of the mat, I'm fishing it up up in the water column where I think that fish is suspended. I don't, once I let it go to the bottom on the initial drop, I, uh, typically then I just kind of yo-yo the bait, you know, up and down. Sometimes you can find the first, you know, the right mat and you get five or six fish under one, you know, one size uh, mat the size of the boat. Well, I, I will say this, when I'm cranking, either, either the day when I was throwing a 1.5 or throwing the, uh, the half ounce red eye shad, both baits I was throwing on fluorocarbon. And uh, the reason for that is that fluorocarbon's a little stiffer. You get a better hookup. Those fish this time of the year <clears throat> have a tendency to be hard and not get to bait as well. And I think you get a better hookup with fluorocarbon. Um, I actually could have got by with braid today. The only thing you got to be careful of with braid is not reacting too quick and giving that fish a chance to engulf the bait. Um, rod choice, these are both seven, four, I threw the crankbait and the uh, lipless crankbait on, uh, these are 7.4 Quantum KVD crankbait rods. I like a seven foot one when I'm target fishing. When I'm really pinpoint casting and just throwing around objects, I like to go to a seven foot rod in the same rod. This is a medium, it's, this is actually a 7.4 medium heavy and I go to a seven foot uh, medium when I'm target fishing. But today making long casts and you know you're hooking up on those long casts, I like that bigger rod, I think you get a better hookup. Why Buoy Outfitters? Our customers know why. When you need something, you come in, you ask for it, and you can get it. 
Great selection of clothes here, guns, shells, calls, whatever you need. I like coming in and doing that. And more importantly for me, I'm a big bow hunter. I think these guys are better than anybody. That's why I come over to Bowie Outfitters. That's Bowie Outfitters. Perkins Road between Essen Lane and Blue Bonnet. Bowie Outfitters for everything outdoors. Things were slower and easier back when, but even though things move faster now, it's still easy to do business with Service Chevrolet Cadillac. For over 40 years, we've known it's about more than a great price. It's about genuine customer service. That's why we've sold more Chevys than any other dealer in Acadiana. Plus, right now, you get all the rebates, all the discounts, and rock-bottom finance rates. Log on at servicegm.com or come see us at Service Chevrolet Cadillac. Ambassador Caffrey in Lafayette. LouisianaSportsman.com is the South's premier hunting and fishing website. Planning a hunting or fishing trip? Visit LouisianaSportsman.com and get up-to-the-date information on weather, tides, or solar data. Our breaking news and continually updating form will keep you up-to-date. Or visit our report section and ask the locals what's been biting and where. Need to sell or buy an outdoor item? LouisianaSportsman.com's free classifieds are the quickest way for you to reach the outdoor market. LouisianaSportsman.com, the quick way to get the most of the outdoors. Ram presents the Louisiana Sportsman Show and Boat Show, the fishing and hunting sales event of the year. It's Louisiana's biggest boat show, ATV show, tractor and outdoor power equipment show ever. Truckload deals on fishing and hunting gear. Eat great food. Watch the splash dogs. See the big buck contest. Test drive a Ram truck or Yamaha ATV. The 35th annual Louisiana Sportsman Show. Lamar Dixon Gonzalez, March 13th through 16th. Visit LouisianaSportsmanShow.com. This, today is a perfect example of the weather not making a difference in a good day of fishing. I guarantee you most everybody out there today when they saw the weather said, you know what, I'll just stay at the house today or I'll do something different. I can tell you for sure it was that way because out of 20 miles that we covered today, riding and looking and fishing and what have you, we saw one other fisherman. Fish bite every day. I mean, it, it's so hard, and I've learned this from tournament fishing because I've been to that weigh-in when I thought they didn't bite, and I know different because somebody caught them. So after a while, it taught me that they, they bite every day. Now, some days are better than others, and we all know when the weather's great, it's probably the best. But there's so many people out there that don't always get an opportunity to pick the day that they go fishing. Like, their day to go fishing is Saturday. And so for me, it's a challenge. The weather makes it challenging. I like that. I want to catch them on the day when you're not supposed to catch them, you know. And today was kind of that day. We're Like I said, we were post front, pre front. I mean, the water wasn't that warm. But, you know, we got out there, we changed, we just kept adapting. Uh, we let the fish kind of tell us what they wanted, and we turned out we had a good day. I just think they come out. They hooked. Y'all ain't hooked real good. Mm. One of y'all's a little chunky chunky. But you know, like this is an area that we fish. We just, you know, rotating back around through those same areas and they, they just popping out. You know, it's warming up. You need a GPS unit if you've never been here before because you can get turned around. For somebody who's never been here before, I, you either come with somebody that knows the basin well or just, you know, just use your head, take your time and come with a GPS unit and you'll be fine. Come on, come on. They just start coming out in the afternoons, you know. That's the reason we didn't get, you know, I guess we should have got out here about 11 o'clock instead of getting out here at 8 o'clock. But I was kind of in a hurry to get out here, too. Still testing these live wells. You can't test them with like one or two. You got to fill that, you got to fill that bad boy up, you know, to make sure that you're able to keep a lot of fish alive, you know. Right now it seems to be doing all right. It takes a little time to learn the basin, but the fishing here is extraordinary. Uh, as you can tell, our last trip, we were across the levee on that side. I mean, it was good. Uh, middle of the summer, hot. I mean, this time it's cold. And we're on the other side, it's good. The whole basin is good. It's so big and vast that even if parts of it are messed up, there are always parts of it that are on. Now there will be times when that side will by far outproduce this side, or vice versa. 
and the more time you spend here and again it's so big during certain water levels of the Mississippi the the bottom end is the best other times the top end is the best it just has its own personality different all over it it's so big it's so scenic I couldn't think of a prettier place to go fishing um, man it's a lot of fun I've never been here I didn't enjoy it never You know, he's got it down his, uh, got it down his throat. And I know that's what they're eating. You know, they're eating shad. I don't know how them other ones come on. Uh, Jerry, we won't film a release on this one. <laughs> like he, he, he met the criteria. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I can't expect, if, if I'm gonna feed them, they gotta expect me to eat. <laughs> Uh-oh, caught. I mean, hooked up, look at that. I tried to do that about once an episode. And it's always with that same bait. That thing red eye shed catches everything. Basically what I'm doing now is just making sure that live wheel is working right. You know, a brand new boat like this, you know, gotta make sure it's working. You know, from one extreme to the other, the first time we're in the basin, it's 110 degrees to this time when you can't get on enough clothes. It just goes to show you how good this area is, how good the fishing is, regardless of the weather. Uh, I hope you learned something this week. I know I did. Join us here next time on Sportsman TV. Ram presents the Louisiana Sportsman Show and Boat Show, the fishing and hunting sales event of the year. It's Louisiana's biggest boat show, ATV show, tractor and outdoor power equipment show ever. Truckload deals on fishing and hunting gear. Eat great food, watch the splash dogs, see the big buck contest, test drive a Ram truck or Yamaha ATV. The 35th annual Louisiana Sportsman Show, Lamar Dixon Gonzalez, March 13th through 16th. Visit LouisianaSportsmanShow.com.